I have continued to experiment with pyrolytic graphite levitation. I've got some large pieces here from K&J Magnetics, and I've been cleaving this uh, graphite down into smaller, thinner shapes and cutting them into round circles and achieving some excellent levitation. But my primary interest was in creating a fully levitating, super low current draw motor. One of the first things I discovered through experimentation is that you need to use ring magnets. On just a standard magnetic array, there's actually a lot of drag on the pyrolytic graphite. When levitating above ring magnets with alternating polarities, the effect is almost frictionless. It's very magical to watch. I did some simple tests to prove that a rotor could be levitated in this way and then started on some basic concept designs. I decided to use four magnets on the rotor with eight driving coils. I once again used the coils that are found in the commonly available solar dancing flowers. I got all the main parts 3D printing and then started testing levitating rotor configurations. Everything was going along very smoothly with the build process and then one of my Patreon supporters named Rabin asked if I would take some power measurements. You'll notice that the microamp meter is just sitting at zero and the millivolts in is only 40 millivolts. But the most surprising thing probably is that it was being powered off a small solar cell under this dark blue plastic box. Any more power than that and the motor would spin up, lose control and fly out of stability. It was right at this point where one evening I decided to run some calculations and just say that the motor was drawing a quarter microamp at 40 millivolts. And I started calculating how long this motor had run on a standard AA battery that had 3.6 watt hours of energy. The numbers and the thousands of years of runtime just blew my mind. So, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but <laughs> this motor is running on Tesla's last breath, folks. I didn't get any sleep that night, but I did find a multimeter that can accurately read down in the low nanoamp range. I also came across an article on lithium thionyl chloride batteries, and these batteries are pretty amazing. They have an over 40 year life. So I'll put a link to an article about those batteries in the video description. Check that out. For now, I decided to drive this motor with one of these 40 year batteries. The motor doesn't take much, so I may come up with something alternative that'll work even better. But for now, this was going to be an interesting experiment. I have 24 mega ohms worth of resistors here in series, and I've got some switches that allow me to switch to different resistance levels so that I can run the motor at different speeds. I have low, medium, and high. Here's a simple schematic for the motor, and it shows where I'm taking my power measurements. And if I did something wrong here, please correct me in the comments. I'm just an artist. I'm no way an expert in this field, but I do enjoy experimenting, and maybe this graphic will help somebody else if they want to build one of these. So here's those crazy numbers that kept me awake that night. And uh, don't take my word for it. Calculate this up yourself. Point it out if I'm wrong. You know, it's no big deal. I've been wrong many times before, but this is what I'm coming up with. So let's look at this. Now that I have a meter that can read in the nanoamp range, I can tell that this is drawing about 150 nanoamps or 1.5 microamps. The millivoltage is pretty smoothed out because of that smoothing capacitor and it hovers right around 33 millivolts. So if I'm reading this correctly, I'm coming up with 89,880 years of runtime on 3.9 watt hours worth of energy, which is the amount of energy in a standard AA battery. I know it's crazy. I've probably made a huge mistake somewhere. So check the numbers, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, <laughs> that's what I'm coming up with. That's what kept me awake all that night as I tried to wrap my head around, you know, what these numbers mean and, and where I was messing up. But anyway, there they are. These next measurements are taken on the medium RPM mode. 
And you can see here that according to my calculations, we got 8,969 years at this mode. You can see the RPM significantly higher as well. Now I wanna clearly state that I'm not claiming this motor is going to run for this many years uh, as it's currently configured here. I'm just doing tests and trying to understand how long this motor would theoretically run on the amount of energy that's in a standard AA battery, which is about 3.9 watt hours. Because this motor uses such a small amount of energy, I can probably come up with another energy harvesting power solution to power this with over the long term. And instead of a reed switch, I'm going to probably look into some sort of ferromagnetic fluid in a glass tube. I don't know, I've got some ideas to explore there, but you get the idea. I also can't help but wonder how much of an effect running this motor inside of a sealed glass vacuum would have on these numbers. Here we can see the motor running on the high RPM mode, and it's using a lot more current. The microwatt pole is 0.288. And according to the calculations, you know, I'm still getting over a thousand years of a uh, runtime at this higher RPM mode. So very, very interesting. Okay, so I'm calling this the ultra high RPM mode. And I basically just bypassed all of the resistors that are in series except for one of them. So we've got two mega ohms of resistance. The current draw has gone up a lot. It's at, you know, three microamps. But our total uh, microwatt draw is now just over one microwatt. And uh, you can see here that it's you know, saying 367 years of runtime at this ultra high RPM mode. So very fascinating. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I'll finish it out here with some clips of the motor so you can get a better idea of its design. And uh, yeah, let's all keep experimenting. I've got more ideas. Uh, I'm really enjoying this pyrolytic graphite. I'm going to be trying for the highest uh, levitation that I can achieve above the magnetic field in a permanent, stable, non-powered magnetic levitation uh, with some larger sheets. So, all right, that's it for now, folks.